We are here in Israel's southernmost city, Eilat. I wanted to talk to you about the naval blockade imposed by the Houthis in the Red Sea and how it's been affecting the port of Eilat. Also, did Israel manage to find a way to bypass the Suez Canal? Come with me as I show you some of the city and dive into the details. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is My State, a program on current events, my belief in God, and my journey in the Holy Land. I arrived here by car, but one can also fly down here by plane. This is the southernmost city in the state of Israel and the only one in the shores of the Red Sea Bay. The bay also serves as a port and is a major tourist attraction for Israelis, in part because of the tax-free shopping, which makes it one big duty-free area without the airport. The city lies in the southern district in the Arava, and has a population of about 53,600 people. The city is named after the biblical city of Elat, also known as Eilot, which is mentioned several times in the Bible. One of the references is in Exodus, when the Israelites were crossing the Red Sea. Later on, before the United Kingdom split into the Kingdom of Israel and the Kingdom of Judah, Elat is mentioned as the station of the commercial fleet of the Hebrew people. Today, it is the fifth largest city in terms of jurisdiction in Israel. The port of Elat serves as Israel's southern gateway to the countries of the Far East, East Africa, and India. The port is used mostly to import vehicles. The last time a ship carrying cars arrived, however, was on November 20 of last year. Because of the war, we have been fighting since October 7. The data show that in January, February of 2024, not even one car was unloaded from the port of Elat. You ask why? Because of the Houthis. Maritime terrorism in the Red Sea region is becoming a considerable challenge. Before the war started, the global shipping industry treated the Houthis as a threat that focuses only on ships with Israel ties. Now, post-October 7th, the Red Sea has become an official war zone with a substantial global impact. As soon as the area was classified as dangerous for merchant ships, the major shipping companies began to implement emergency plans aimed at minimizing the risk and announced, among other things, the cancellation of all shipments that were on their way to the Red Sea. That's the sea. Another interesting trend popped out around that same time. Several shipping companies began to wipe Israel off the map and direct cargo destined for Israel, including vehicles to neighboring ports in the Middle East. Some of these companies are considered strategic customers of Israel's largest ports. It is important to remember they are the most efficient and there aren't many alternatives that would still be financially profitable. Most maritime transport passes through two bottlenecks, the Suez Canal and the Panama Canal. If something goes wrong in one of them, the delays could last for weeks and sometimes months in the arrival of goods to a given destination. Remember the shipping container back in 2021 that got stuck in the Suez Canal for six days? So traffic here at the Lats port has come to a standstill. This has a profound effect on the city and its economy. You see, the port workers here are not cheap. Elat doesn't offer many employment opportunities. Tourism is a major source of income, but of course, there is little to no tourist traffic at the moment. Just a few months ago, the IDF intercepted a ballistic missile that was aimed at Elat, and the US Navy intercepted multiple missiles and drone attacks. So it's not only the war in general, but a specific threat to Elat that has made it such a quiet city at the moment. We have no doubt that the situation will return to normal because there is no other choice. 
Importing a car through a lot from the east is profitable since the ships do not have to go through the Suez Canal and pay about half a million dollars per ship. The climate here is favorable to stowing cars. The port services are good and after the war, the trade route will surely return to normal. But in the meanwhile, the attacks of the Houthis have paralyzed a lot and drastically slowed maritime traffic in the Red Sea. But I guess crises like this usually bring with them some kind of technological advancement as well, right? In this case, stocks soar as a result of the war. For example, the stocks of the small Elat company, Draknet Company. The company's current market value is $51 million. And this is no coincidence. Draknet has developed a technology that brings together importers and transport companies on a digital market with the aim of optimizing transport costs and usage of space on trucks. Draknet signed an agreement with an Emirati logistical company called Pure Transit, which allows it to transport containers from Dubai or Bahrain to the port of Haifa. The goal being to use Draknet's technology to find exporters who will agree to fill the same container on its way back to the Persian Gulf. And so, Draknet found a temporary solution transporting goods by land. While a ship takes two weeks to get from the port of Dubai to the port of Ashdod in Israel, a truck makes this journey in only four days. The downside is that trucks are limited to how many cars they can transport in one round trip. But that hasn't prevented the land bridge from starting to operate between the ports of Dubai and Haifa. Gas prices play a significant role here as well. The price of transportation by truck is about $1.2 per kilometer, about 20% more expensive than the price of transportation by sea on normal days. But since the outbreak of the war, the prices of sea transportation have skyrocketed. So Traknet says that transporting goods by truck is still cheaper than by ship. All this has had and will continue to have extensive economic implications, which will be felt all over the world and in Israel, and not only because of the sharp jump in sea transportation costs. At the moment, the landline meets the urgent demands of transporting food, raw materials from factories, and unloading cargo from ships in Israel's ports. In fact, Draknet started working on the route in question more than a month before the outbreak of the war after the signing of the Abram Accords. Following the Houthi attacks, the transport lines from China to Israel did become more expensive, but the duration of the transport was shortened due to combining sea and land traffic. Buyers in Israel report a shortening of the time of receiving the shipment they ordered. This translates to about 34,000 tons of goods per month, using about 2 million tons of fuel over five years. In practical terms, it means about 800 trucks are traveling back and forth each month. So the land solution is indeed significantly shorter and safer. It won't replace the scope of the cargo ships, though, since only about 350 trucks can pass through the Sheikh Hussein border crossing near the Israeli city of Bet She'an every day. It is, however, a new and safe alternative that shortens the shipping time and is to some extent a preparation for a new Middle East, the development of trade relations in the region within the framework of the Abram Accords. Look, the war with Hamas and all the supporters of Iran is precisely to thwart any possibility of peace that started in the Middle East. Just before the start of the war, there was an initiative to establish a railway line along the same truck route that would be able to transport a greater amount of cargo. 
The USA adopted the initiative because it requires an investment of billions of dollars in the construction of rails, mainly in Jordan, and connecting the Israeli rail system to Jordan. But at the moment, there is no date to start the construction. The truck lines will cause the development of infrastructure needed for the train route, and many companies from around the world are following these developments closely. Apparently, Israeli mines will be able to overcome this too in time. Powers of evil and terrorism are working hard to destroy any chance of peace between Israel and its Arab neighbors in the Middle East. This is clearly a spiritual war, and the only way to fight a spiritual war is by prayer. So please join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem and this entire region, for God's love to spread and touch the hearts of the entire people of the Middle East. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.